Greetings everyone, this is BJ Black from No Export oh, For You, I and welcome to part 118 of yes. my Let's Play of Amayui Castle Meister. While I was out getting that purple so, magic ore, I made a few captures. Not really big captures. In fact, they were all one-star captures. But I've got a couple of trainings I can do. And this guy, fire. And that's that. Yeah, that's all I captured. Wait. Ha! I captured one of the lightning. One of the lightning butterflies. That is so useless. Okay. Back to the point. Let's craft this thing. This is a magic function windmill. Let's call it. Oh, and I've been collecting a good deal of stuff. Wow, I'm full on magic potions. Yes, They must have dropped somewhere. No, I don't want to go below 90. Well, honestly, I didn't need to do that. It's just an excuse to use some of those seeds. Yes. Yes. Healing potions are good for us. I still need more of that green stuff. Green liquid. Ah, red liquid lets me b build some of these, yes. which I don't have many of. Yeah, those are emergency items. Oh, all the things I want to build that I can't. Yes, yes, Sugida. So we built that windmill. So we got this customer request through Rishu, and we completed it without problem. The deal is the replacement of a windmill. A broken down, completely unusable windmill. And since we were replacing it anyway, I've already decided to make it even better than before. Yeah, that's what he does. So Avar was able to throw himself into it because it's the first time in a while he's been able to do, you know, engineer-like work. Yep, through our polished techniques we're able to support people's lifestyles. It's something you can't get tired of. So this would be in the grape fields that are adjacent to the town. So there are lots of these windmills actually. So now that this windmill is back in commission, we take a look at it and the person who requested it came and greet comes and greets us. So thanks. She hardly recognizes the thing. So this windmill is in order to meet the needs of the pilgrims, actually. Doing things like juicing grapes and grinding flour. So now that it's been new, freshly made, freshly remade. This will help her in her work. Well, we're glad you like it. 
So you can reopen the use of it right away if you want. And because this is the, for the benefit of the pilgrims, that's why you were in such a hurry to find a craftsman to do this, wasn't it? <laughs> and because she doesn't seem very elf-like for an elf, she, Rishu herself was a bit surprised at the conversation. Well, she has a lot of opportunity to meet with humans and beast men. So, if she wasn't sociable with them, it would be bad for her business. You know what, lady? I like you. I'm going to make you an honorary human. Now that sound, might sound really condescending, but you're going to be very glad of it. When I start my elven genocide, you're going to be safe. So, be happy. Okay, so Avaro has something he'd like to ask. You're not the only one who uses these windmills, right? No, you mean? Well, what do you mean by that? Okay, while we were doing this replacement here, it's been bugging him. If this one were just being overused, that would explain why it was broken down, but the other windmills in the area are also in get used are also in regular use. Only this one windmill was broken down, busted ass old. So, Avaro was wondering what was the meaning of that. Oh, that's what he meant. So, this area is under Coup de Vance's management. Although she never asked him his reasons, this one windmill he prevented from having a, a replacement. But only recently now, it broke down so badly that it could not even be repaired. And then, finally, he gave permission for its replacement. Coup de vance. I'm surprised they even allow humans in here. Oh, hey, Avaro. On this windmill here, there's something written on it. The old one that we were replaced? What the, what, let's see, let's see. Avaro didn't notice at all. So, on the windmill, there is Arving Palin and Ruda carved into it. That's two people's names, isn't it? Arving Palin and Luda. I wonder if that's the people who made the windmill. Luda. Luda. This elf lady remembers that name. It's the daughter of Kud Vance, who died in an ill who died to an illness. So Luda is the name of Kud Vance's daughter. That means that it's Avaro's. Yes, we remember. It hasn't been that long. But she died to an illness? When Kud Vance explained it, the reason she died was she forgot her role and ended and reaped the rewards of injustice. Oh, 
ルース王国の貴族の家名ですそれも公爵家の地位を持つ王侯貴族ですわね So, Richard and Sally recognized the Pauren family name. In the Influus Kingdom, that is one of the noble houses. Furthermore, they are highly esteemed in the public and draw blood from the royal family. They don't have a lot of achievements that stand out, however, and they don't take front stage very often. So, nobles of the Influus Kingdom. So, Ruda was a kind girl, but she was a bit strange. And for whatever reason, she decided to marry a human. So that was it. This windmill was those two's. And for that reason, Kud Vance didn't want it to be replaced until it was completely unusual, unusable. Sophia thinks that Kud Vance decided to protect her memory by doing this. Well, he said that he cut ties with her. But Fia thinks that that wasn't all the, the whole truth. Hmm, yeah, that could be true. Okay, Avaro. Let's say sorry for replacing it as a bit of an apology and go talk to him. Yeah. Sophia is talking and the words enter Avaro's ears, but his response is a bit lackluster. Because in his head is another thought. Arving Palin. That is Avaro's father's name. Oh man. So, we're doing well. This next conversation is going to be long, but. Well, let's get to it. Blarg, I'm Godzilla. Oh, no. Avaro's talking about how Fia's acting now that we've learned Avaro's mom's name. So she's all being her excited, uh, dorky, uh, well, she's running around being excited. It's what she does. Anyway, she's called for a meeting with Kudvance. So we're just gonna go do this, huh? It seems like he didn't like us, actually. Yes, we're going. Because we're family, we have to, you know, talk things out. But he'd already said that he'd cut fa ties with his family, you know. Well, even if there are no ties, he's still got sentiments to him. This particular incident with his mother proves that he still has... still thought fondly of her. And furthermore, the time we talked to him last time, before he decided to say that we would have to fight, 
He did, for an instant, look upon Avaro with kind eyes, says Fia. Is that so? Avaro really doesn't think that's how it was. Well, Fia's still dragging Avaro along on this. To meet his grandfather again. Okay, Grandpa, let's talk. Boy, she has no idea of the proper way to, to address people. I've always getting kind of scared that someday she's going to say something stupid and get somebody angry at her. At least he's level-headed about it. Anyway, he says, I'll have you not address me by that name. Okay, she gets it. So, Kudvance. We were hoping you had some time for us today. Okay, Fia. If you have a, a use for our conversation with him, he would be glad to have it with you. だが、紙に直接尋ねられ、時間を作らぬほど礼を書くつもりもない。予定にある越見者が訪れる間でよいならば、付き合わせていただこう。But it's not that he doesn't have the time to have these direct audiences with her, but he does have an appointment for another audience. Though he can talk until that time comes. <laughs> okay, thanks. As Fia thought, he really is ca a kind man. So... So, no matter how many times they come and talk to him, he isn't going to give us permission to enter the Holy Grounds. Everything will be decided at the Holy Accords. So please understand that. Ah, no, no, no. Today, we didn't come to get seek permission for that. So, we just wanted to talk today. It has nothing to do with the God's Haze, just a little talk with grandfather and grandchildren. Well, if we're going to set that as the connection we're having this conversation in, where does Fia fit in? Oh, Fia? Fia's Avaro's lover. So, she's like his grand granddaughter as well. Kudvance shoots a glance of doubting Avaro's integrity at him. Look, don't look at him with that his eyes. Although, yes, he's your grandson, and he's kind of sleeping with the goddess that he serves, and that's pretty unbelievable. Okay, then. Let's start with the conversation we wanted to have. Sorry. Ruda's memories are... The windmill with Ruda's memories attached to it, we went and replaced. So, is that so? 
Code of Honor had received a report that it had been replaced. So it was us who did it. We who did it. But there's no need to apologize. Code of Honor is the one who issued permission for it. Furthermore, everything that has a form will one day break down. If that's all, that's all right then. All right, Avora has something he'd like to confirm here. Good. Let's get down to this, this sentimental nonsense that Theo is dragging us through. At the time, over there, we heard that Avora's mother died from an illness, and that's been bothering us. Oh, bam! You've been found out. But what you said was her cause of death was that she forgot her role and worked injustice. So, what's the deal? The people who live in Farareoras got one explanation and we got another one. Perhaps you're trying to hide something here. So, regarding Avaro's mother's death, We'd like to hear an explanation without any pretenses. Well, Kudvans takes a breath and answers. So, her cause of death was that she forgot the role of her family and tried to head for the holy ground. So she forgot the blessings that she received from the gods and as repayment for the injustice she tried to tried to perform she lost her life. It was a foolish decision and an end that she brought upon herself. Oh, well then, in that case, just like us, she tried to get permission from Coup de Vance, and then he refused and the, res and the result was... Don't tell me that he actually killed his own daughter and because that would be bad publicity he spread around the report that it was a disease so yes he stopped her and that was the cause for by which he decided to cut ties with her. But it was not we directly who stopped her. We Fiusia, we the Fiusia faith. Masuki福伝の章という。So the ones who seduced her from the correct path and further took her life. It was all done by a certain human tribe. The Dark Refiners. A batch of men totally taken over by darkness. The Dark Refiners. Yeah, where have we heard that before? Come on. So, what's this mean? If Avaro's human father was... Hmm? Ah. Did Avaro's human father then convince his mother to take them to the holy ground? 
But if Fuchsia... If the Fuchsia Faith here, led by Coup de Vance, wasn't the ones who did it, and the humans did it... Hmm. So her true cause of death was... Turning away from the elves, and also, those humans saw her as a betrayal. Saw her actions as a betrayal. Yes, but what about Avara's father? Before, Kudvance also said that he died with her daughter. So, at the same time as his daughter, he lost his life. And in the same way as his daughter, he was trying to protect the child. In order to protect him, So, we had thought that the child was lost to us and fallen into the hands of the enemy. And in order to prevent a useless confusion, they decided on a different version of events to publicize. Is that so? So that's how it went. They did hide the truth for that purpose. Hmm. In as much as it they had a purpose at all, I guess that's a good one. So the daughter of the high priest of the Fuchsia Faith died to an illness. Yeah, if they said that she was killed by humans, that would be a pretty messy situation to uprise. And furthermore, Avaro's existence, having even been born, doesn't appear to have been made public. Ho. Avara, your father's name was Arving Palin. And he was one who bore the blood of the Ruth's royal family. So, Kudvance's daughter was able to fall in love with him because the Ruth family under the name of Fuchsia ruled their kingdom properly. Their good bloodline, their purity, induced Coup Advance to lower his guard. So that's how it was. So Arving was royalty. In other words, Navarro too has the blood of the Influous Kingdom's royalty in him. Any mi anybody mind if I call bullshit on this? Okay, beginning of the game, Navarro is a mongrel of people. He's not an elf. He's not a human. Everybody hates him. And later on we learn, oh hey, you're a dark refiner too. Oh hey, you're a rune elf too. Oh hey, you're a royalty too. And come on, does he have to be related to all of the bad guys? The only one left is that asshole dragon, Kalmerg. If we find out that Alvaro is part dragon too, I'm going to stab somebody. Okay, as far as the game goes, I stab a lot of people, but I'm still going to stab somebody because of this. Okay. So Arving, along with Gaidal, was one of the dark refiners. Yeah, we learned that when we heard his name, actually. 
that he was royalty, a member of the Parliament House. In other words, this is how it went, right? Avaro's mother was a pure-blooded rune elf. And because she was Coup de daughter, he had, she had a lot of responsibilities. Okay, he doesn't say anything, but he nods. And as the high priest's daughter, she also had the opportunity to meet the influence royal family. And that's when she caught the eye of the dark refiners. Since they had gotten into the royal family as well, that's how they were able to set her into a marriage. And the person chosen for that mission was Avaro's father, Arving Palin. Because they wanted the blood of the elves in order to get into the god's haze, this was a necessary step. The Dark Refiners are a clan that is that uh, carries on this wish from the past of getting into the God's Haze. And over these long years, they've been searching for a way in. So the Elf's powers were necessary. This is just speculation, a bit. But those violent winds that... Those violent looking... Those violent natural looking winds that protect the holy ground, Avaro thinks is a barrier that only can be broken by the elves. Ah, he can't say anything of that. Oh well, yeah. You don't deny it. Avaro says. So much like when they tried to tie down the castle, Avaro might be able to break the barrier around the God's Haze as well. So these high-blooded elves, of which Kud Vance may be the last pure-blooded one, are the ones who apparently keep up the barrier around the holy ground. Orbing Polenwa, Junbok to you in Shongatsio in Ingenzo. So Arving Paling was a human who gave a strong impression of being honest. He seemed the type who actually had a hard time judging the true intentions of other people. At least that's how Coup de Vance assessed him. And that's why he was able to trick everyone. Is that what he's saying? Nampu So the Paran family They had a rather large forested area and some mountains in the north of Infrulu's kingdom. And also, they drew blood from the royal family, but that was all. They weren't particularly high. And in fact, they had little effect outside of their particular... Well, they had little effectiveness, let's say. <laughs> So they didn't have a lot of people under them, and they didn't have a lot of raw materials. They weren't really very good at, many, at uh, taking advantage of the situation or people around them. 
And as time went on, they were actually falling out of favor. And that's when they noticed. At a certain point, they decided they needed power. And behind the scenes, they started dealings with the dark refiners. So this was how the dark refiners blood got into Avaro. So most likely Arving, as part of the Pollen family, was totally taken in by the Dark Refiner's agenda. Probably it was set from the time he was born that he would be a member of the Dark Refiner's and perhaps even set out to marry into the elves. So in other words, the Paulian family was not originally a member of the that organization, but fell into it and got taken advantage of. So just before they had completely fallen out, they connected with the Dark Refiners and got taken in by them instead. It must have been an exchange that benefited both parties. <laughs> the Pollen family was taken in by money and influence. そしてアービングは奴らの思惑に従い娘に近づいた。神の身元へたどり着くために我らの血を欲して娘をたぶらかしたのだ。and then Avaring, Arving, hmm. following the agenda of the Dark Refiners, came close to her da to his daughter. In order to get to the get into the gods' haze, he says this uh, drawing to the feet of the gods. He went to. He went to seduce his daughter in order to get the bl their blood. So Avaro's father tricked his mother into having the marriage. That is what he thought. That's what Kuz Vance thought. Even. So, right when the child was born, the two's lives were targeted. They said to Coup Advance, in fact, that instead of passing the child on to the organization, they cut ties. And after that, the two of them headed for the Holy Land, the Holy Grounds. On the way, the humans caught up with them, and while they tried to protect the child, the two of them died. So, with Kudvance's explanation, we know what went on. <laughs> so, damn it. Trying to protect him, that's how it went. Hmm? So, what that means. What does that mean? So, Ruda was killed by these humans. And in the same way Arving was. Because they betrayed the organization. Is that it? Yeah. And?
So, in order to break the seal and get into the God's haze, Luda, his mother by herself, should have been enough. After all, she had the blood of the elves that was necessary. In that case, getting to the holy ground would be... Well, you could achieve that objective. But that isn't how his father chose to do it. He went so far as to marry her, and after that had a change of heart. That's why he turned his back on the organization's agenda and told everything to Luda. This also got to Kud Vance in turn. Okay, so why did he all of a sudden have this change of heart? Well, the answer to that question, Avar is a bit embarrassed to put into words. But he has to say it. After all, he was born with it. So it was for the purpose of getting the objective that they were taken advantage of. But in truth, they did fall in love with each other. And they loved their family. And that is why they didn't want to turn their back on the teachings of the Fuchsia faith and betray the God they believed in. They didn't want to draw their family into it. No, he didn't want to draw his family into it. Oh, that's right, we were talking about Arving in particular. First, his wife Luda, and especially, especially, <laughs> Avaro gets a bit choked up. And the person who continues this is actually Kud Vance. There was one child with the two of them. One so young that he could not understand the difference between good and evil. Avaro. Yeah, that's Avaro. Right, because Avaro was born, the two of them cut ties with the Dark Refiners. So, the Parlin family had its own circumstances and they continued to be used by the organization. But his father, at the very least, refused. Now that Varro thinks about it, he would have been a most convenient pawn not merely having the blood of the elves, but also the blood of the dark refiners. So in addition to being someone who can use the castle, he had the rune elves' blood that would let him get to the destination as well. So, with the elves knowledge and the faith in their god being so natural it probably if he had been brainwashed he would have been a perfect child for the well whatever Gaidal's final plan was so Fia looks down and closes her eyes So the two of them betrayed the organization and delivered quite a setback to their plans. But the Dark Refiners didn't give up. So next, in order to get their hands on this most advantageous child, they tried to take him by force. 
And the two of them gave their lives in resistance, but failed. And then, through someone's intervention, the newborn of Aura was sent out of Infrudu's kingdom entirely. Somehow, to some place where the dark refiners could not reach him, he was sent to another country. Although, unfortunately, in the end, he made his way back. <laughs> So, as Avaro says, that for the most part is the truth. So that basically is the whole story of how Luda died. All right. We're glad we had this conversation. We've learned a lot, really. But Avaro still has one objection to this. Why is it that the two of them, after betraying the organization, still tried to go to the Holy Ground? So, Kudval's, Kudvance's eyebrows twitch at this question. <laughs> That's right. That is weird, isn't it? So, Arving and Luda with their newborn. Mm. Oh yes, Arving got close to Luda and then married as part of the organization's agenda to get to the Holy Ground. Well then, in that case, Avaro's parents had their change of heart. Why did they still want to go to the God's Haze? So, Kudavans doesn't answer this. He just looks down. He cannot tell us. It's still too early for us to know. So, he's going to ask us to leave today. Leave it at this today. And that audience of which he spoke is going to be happening presently anyway. Okay, Kudvance. Could we come again to have another talk? To that question, Kudvance does not answer. Hooey. Man, we got some good questions and we got some good answers and we're st still left with something we need to know. But interestingly, there are no events. So for the first time in, I don't know, three chapters or so, I have just have to kill a few days and then the plot will advance. I think I'm going to come down to this one. I took some spare time I had to come down and visit it, and it's got something interesting to happen. So, you can look forward to that next time. So, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.